Now let's talk about the type of joints used in cement concrete pavements. Why joints are provided in cement concrete pavements? We cannot make our pavements into long thick sheets because it would be very easy to deteriorate them and cracking would be very frequent. So we try to make these rigid pavements or cement concrete pavements into a number of slabs and various stresses due to interior loading, edge loading, corner loading, temperature variations occur in these slabs. So in order to prevent warping and cracking of these slabs, these joints are provided and these joints are of two types. The first one is longitudinal joints and the second one is transverse joints. So let us first draw the layout of a rigid pavement. So this is our longitudinal joint. This is our contraction joint. This is our expansion joint. Okay, let's talk about the longitudinal joints. We know that during the initial period of curing, shrinkage cracks try to develop in cement concrete pavements and in order to prevent the development of these additional shrinkage cracks, longitudinal joints are provided. These joints also act as contraction joints and warping joints in cement concrete slabs. And these longitudinal joints can also be used as lane marking in highways. They are provided between two lanes and in order to strengthen the longitudinal joint and to prevent it from opening up, tie bars of specified diameter and length are provided at the longitudinal joints. Now let's talk about the transverse joints. Transverse joints are of three types. The first one is contraction joints, the second one is expansion joints and the third one is construction joints. Alright, contraction joints. Contraction joints are provided to prevent our slab from contraction and they are made by making grooves of 3 mm width and a depth of about 25 to 30 percent of the pavement thickness and at the intervals of 4 meter to 5 meter in the longitudinal direction. We know that shrinkage cracks try to occur in our pavement and we want these cracks to be more finer and they should not deteriorate our pavement. So in order to make these shrinkage cracks even more finer, they these grooves are made so that these cracks should occur just below these grooves and in order to prevent the widening or spreading of these cracks we provide the reinforcement bars just below the contraction joint. Now let's talk about the expansion joints. During winters the slab tries to contract whereas in summers the slab tries to expand and to make this expansion more effective we try to leave a gap of 20 mm between the ends of these two slab so that the expansion should be effective and there should be no cracking in the pavement. But by leaving this space of 20 mm uh, we are making this section more weaker. So in order to strengthen this section we provide double bars of specified diameter and length at this section so that there should be transferring of load from one end of the pavement to another end and the transfer of load should be effective so there should be effectively transfer of load from one end of the pavement to the other end of the pavement this was all about the expansion joints now let's talk about the construction joints so what is a construction joint uh, we know that at the end of the day it is not always possible that we leave the construction at the expansion joint or at the contraction joint. There are chances that we leave the construction in the middle of somewhere, in the middle of the slab, somewhere between contraction joint and expansion joint. So next day when we will start the construction again and if we start it from that point where we left, it would result in a weaker section and this point is called our construction joint. So we try to merge this construction joint with an expansion joint but if it's not possible then we try to make this section more stronger by putting double bars and then start the construction again and try to put a contraction joint near this construction joint. And this was all about the construction joint.